All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat um, and also on YouTube if you're watching this later. Welcome to the stream. We are going to be playing some Rakdos Goblins for uh, uh, today. So this is a little bit different take on goblins. We don't have a whole lot of like the goblin synergies. So uh, the big the big reason why I'm calling this goblins is because we're playing a goblin gathering deck. So that's that's the main thing that we're doing here. Um, is we're trying a a deck where we can just play you know lots of goblin gatherings and just kind of play this card. Um, so that's that's like the goal of this this deck here this was a donation deck that we that we're going to try out with it um i've been talking a little bit in chat here about the deck before the video but just kind of go over a couple of things um i'm pretty worried about 21 lands uh we have a, a whole lot of threes and everything obviously light at the stage if we get to deal damage it would only cost one but pretty worried about the the 21 lands but we'll see how it works out prospector may be able to help us with that uh we can sack some goblins to add mana and the big thing that we want to use Prospector for is to be able to help get out Siege Gang Commander early because uh, Siege Gang is just a great card. Um, and uh, um, oh, you're welcome, Razar. Thanks for the kind words. And besides that, we're splashing a little bit of black for two just really, really strong cards. We have one Judith, which, of course, makes all these 1-1 one, one creatures into 2-1 creatures. So... That's pretty good. Of course, Judith's second ability does not work with tokens, so that's unfortunate. We don't get a ping stuff with all these tokens, so that's that's unfortunate. But, you know, making them two ones, that's good enough. And Priest of the Forgotten Gods is absolutely perfect in this deck. Uh, it's it's going to be... I think this is going to be the strongest card in the deck, honestly. Um, I think the games that we'll be winning are probably going to be on the back of this card, uh, where we um, get to turn these really bad creatures prospector instigator goblin gathering and the tokens the war boss makes uh just kind of useless one ones we need to like put them to good use and that's what priests of the forgotten gods can do um by turning two of them into making our opponent sacrifice a creature make them lose two life and we get to add more mana to be able to cast like some stuff and draw a card it just does so much stuff so um so there we go. We got some Rakdos Goblins. Let's try them out. All right, a couple questions here. Do you have an idea of how a 4x Squee deck would work? I don't know. The The thing about Squee is you just don't need four of them. Because once you draw one Squee, the other Squees don't do anything. Because even if they use any removal on your Squee at all, you get to recast it. So having four Squees in your deck is probably not something that you'd want. Because... Uh, once you have one squee, the other ones don't do anything. It's not like a, a different legend where if you have, um, you know, four Judiths and they kill one Judith, then you have your second Judith throw a backup. Well, if they kill your squee, you can still recast your first squee. Um, yeah, theater horrors we have in the sideboard. Um, but yeah. Hey, Horatio. Uh... This is kind of a problem. This hand's not good, but I want to keep it. But our hand's not good. The biggest reason why I want to keep this is because we we actually do have like five lands, uh, with which how little lands we have in the deck means that we should be drawing some spells here. Oh, uh, sorry to hear about that, Mike. So, I kind of want to keep this. This is a high variance hand. This hand could be really bad, but it could also work out really well. If we, you know, so I'm gonna try it. Um, yeah, mulliganing with our 21 land deck. I just don't really want to mulligan. <laughs> uh, that is true. I could try this. This may be like mono blue, where I could try to wait till like next turn they put Curious Obsession on the thing, and then I lightning strike it, and then I get out way ahead. But they could also just have like Curious Obsession plus dive down, and then me waiting on the lightning strike. Their creature, they get to dive down their creature, and then it's just awful for me. 
Yeah, sand's working out. It was working out a little bit ago. Um, I think the answer is no for being able to cap cast a squee that is Ixalan's binding. I think at first the answer was yes, you could because of some weird layer rule, but I think they changed that layer rule because they that wasn't intended uh, to be able to do that. So they didn't hit a land drop last turn, even though they cast Chart of Course and drew a couple extra, extra cards. Yeah, our, our keep's working out okay. We're just trading with these spell pierces, which is nice. And the spell pierces out of their hand that do nothing now. Yeah, we've only seen one extra land in the top nine cards. Uh, it, you know, like one problem is we've just seen these these Kirk prospectors aren't aren't really doing much. One, two, three, four. So they they cannot uh, just adapt the Terramander here in response, but obviously they can have dive down. But making them use the dive down on their turn, mana wise. Hey, Matthew. Just let that happen. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were going to suggest some changes. Uh, I was... I took a little time kind of waiting because that's... Uh, I thought you would, but... Didn't hear anything from you. Because you were here earlier. Oh! Attack with all! That... Alright. All good. Missed out on potentially four points of damage there. All right, and they certainly have enough. Well, do they actually? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, they do have enough now. So this is like the... The big reason why Skirk Prospector can do something is with Judith. Uh, being able to sack your creatures with Judith in play. Yeah, I was playing around Settle. <laughs> uh, I did play Bant Tokens one time. Uh, probably five days ago to a week ago or so. Um, you can find it on, on my YouTube channel. Um... I played like a 5-0 list of Bant Tokens. It's probably about a week ago. I wasn't super impressed with the list. 
Just the same kind of list that other people are playing these days. I remember that. That's what I remember from it. All right, so playing against Drakes. One Coil and Daredevil. Don't think Chain Whirler is good against Drakes. I mean, it's, it's good against an unflipped, whatever it's called. I think Siege King and Prospector are probably what I'm uh, going to be taking out most of the time. Do I want Theater of Horrors in this matchup? No, not really. Yeah, Volley Veteran could be a good sideboard card. Um, yeah. You saw one that was different with Dovin and Deputy, along with Hero of Precinct 1. I could see that. I could see playing those cards together. I haven't... I, I don't love Hero of Precinct 1. In general, I'm, I'm kind of low on that card. But I think that's how Hero Precinct 1 can be worthwhile. Is with... Um, <clears throat> is with, like, Tristani and March of the Multitudes. How is Theater better than Frenzy in this deck? Uh, it's certainly possible it's not. I, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, three mana is easier than four, I suppose. Okay. It's not so bad for us. Just got rid of a um a war boss and a couple tokens. Light up stage has helped us get through our deck. Oh, wait. Yeah, I should just play that swamp. Right. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they do have the mana to adapt to that thing. So we're going to use a lava coil here. I guess they can have a second dive down. 
All right. Sweet. Put them down to 10. Put them down to 9. And we finally get to cast a goblin gathering for the first time. Ooh, those are some new goblin tokens. I haven't seen those. Yep, Daredevil's a pirate. Doesn't die to the cannonade, which is pretty nice for us. gonna do it gonna do it all right picked up a win good job Rakdos Gobos they just had two they just had like all Terramanders didn't have any any Drakes they never played a Drake against us it is definitely easier to play against or to beat Drakes when they don't play a single Drake against you so that's a that's a good good omen. Drake doesn't play a Drake against you, and I like this hand on on the play here, getting to lead with Priest on turn two, straight into the Goblin Gathering. And we haven't been affected by our 21 lands yet. Hmm. <laughs> hey, good evening, Swift Calf. All right, let's go one ones. You only need more one ones. That's what we need. Even more one ones. Oh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is awesome. That card is wonderful. It's a land. That's not more one ones. We need more one ones. Play against another opponent who's getting stuck on lands and not playing anything. That's good for our deck. So lightning striking that on the stack means it doesn't take... Shouldn't take that. So we should be able to, yeah, keep all five. So they're at 10. Come on, Judith. Judith for the win. No, more 1-1s. One -one I think I probably need to worry about finality a little bit here. So I'm not going to play the instigator. Yeah, a little worried about that. Hoping not another finality. And of course, I'm not just like wasting the lightning strike um, on the opponent before, because I don't want them to know that their life total is lower than what they think it is. And also, our opponent could just play Wild Growth Walker plus Explore Creature, so we want to keep lightning strike available for that um, situation as well. Um. Judith? No Judith. OK. 
gosh. Okay, that was like the worst time to see these cards. I just need to keep the lightning strike in hand because of Wild Growth Walker. Let's see if you're worth. No one knows the wild. I think we can like get around the Hydroid Crisis. You know, they they didn't have Hydro or uh, Wild Growth Walker. Of course, we'd have the ability to lightning strike them. But it, using the lightning strike on the Crisis, I think, is not what we wanted to be doing. All right, and tapping out to do this, so if we draw land, we get to just Siege Gang and kill them. There we go, that'll do. All right. Ugh. Game two. Um, <laughs> thanks, Akura. Yes, a couple of times I know what I'm doing. Um, it's probably kind of a tough matchup for us. I think we kind of got fortunate there. I could have like drill bit in to start to try to keep them, try to have them discard a finality. Um, or just whatever other card they have, like Krasis, like just whatever else. They're going to have like Cry of the Carnarium in their deck also now. Cry's a problem. Siege King's probably just not too necessary here with all their sweepers. They'll have just all their creatures. I think I want to play both Drillbit and Duress. And I want the coils into. Try this. I think this is going to be a tough match for us to win, but we're going to do our best. All right, not a wild growth walker. That's good. Doesn't look like if they're playing thought erasure. I think they're playing the Sultai deck without with no explore package, uh, which that's a good good sign for us because the explore package is really good against us. And so I, I don't think our opponent has it. Their last surveil they kept on top. Um, keep it on top still. Which isn't a real good sign for us. So if they're not playing Explore Package, then I'm like, if we go to game three, I'm going to be taking the Lava Coils back out. Das getting that 
Twitch Prime sub in for the third month. Thanks, Toss Bomb. Sub number five on the day. Not giving my opponent the extra mana. Alright, sub number five on the day, so we'll be cracking open a pack after this. Um, and actually, it looks like we've gone down with subscribers. We're at 101 right now. They're only, they only have one card in the end. That's not so bad. <laughs> no. King Toll, that's 101 subs until the next 12 hour stream. I think I need those theater horrors in. I just have so much life gain. I assume they have a whole lot more lands than us. Ugh. So, kind of drawn a little too many lands here. Yeah, it looks like we're going to game three. We're going to be switching up our, our deck a little bit. Yep, this is a Rakdos Goblin deck. Hmm. It's not ideal. Sultai, basically Sultai control here after sideboarding. It's Scavenger and Krasis. Some mana creatures. All right, so they still have Hostage Taker. Yeah, the, the, the stage was lit, but nobody came to watch. We just don't need six two damage burn spell, like six two mana burn spells between coils and strikes. And strike being able to go upstairs is the card that I want here. I feel like I should be playing these Siege Gang Commanders um, as well.
Yeah, I really, I really like Priests of the Forgotten Gods, but with how much removal they have, it's unlikely Priest is going to do a whole lot for us. I'm going to trim down to two Priests, put a Siege Gang in there. Yeah, it just takes a little, just takes a, a second, Dwarf, you're good. Assume that between our draw step and light at the stage, we can find some more lands. Or not. I liked our hand. They do have the explore package? Maybe just Jade Light? None of our options are very good. I guess my best option is to cast Drill Bit. I mean, if I attack and they block, then Drill Bit and Daredevil are just dead. I mean, well, I guess I just I, I guess I can cast Daredevil. I guess I get to cast Daredevil. Yeah, it's certainly a block there. Daredevil can be difficult for my opponent. With it being first strike and potentially three power with Judith. This all went really bad for us. Good news, it looks like our opponent just kind of has a lot of mana and not much to do with it. I think that's what, I think that's where I'm kind of at is just giving my opponent lots of mana. Which is... Usually not very good. Yeah, crisis would be a huge problem, of course. Gorum, that's all your fault. For saying that our opponent had a was going to be playing a big crisis, you're not supposed to say the opponent's going to going to play then say the best card that they could possibly have because then they play it. If you if you don't say that, then maybe they don't play it. Hey, nerd girl, games are going all right. My my hand's not. Shaping up too well for us this game. Um, I just do all the donation decks that that are available for me. 
When you donate for a donation deck, you get to pick what day and what time slot you'd like your deck being played. I don't have like a, a queue of more donation decks. So these are these are the ones that I have right now, these three. So if you'd like to donate for a deck tomorrow or the next day or the next, you know, if you want to if you're like, hey, play this on Tuesday 3rd or Wednesday 4th or whatever, we'll go ahead and get it done. Krasis is going to kill us, though, before we can before we can do anything from here. All right, one and one. Just missing that second land drop just killed us. The upside on our hand was really high, which is why I liked keeping it. We had a really high upside hand there. Um, but, you know, it's kind of the problem with 21 lands. You're going to have, you're going to have, sometimes you're going to have games like that uh, you don't do anything. Hey, Peek. <laughs> Not sure what to write here. Well, thank you so much for that resub. That is sub number six. Oh, we just got to the sub goal last time that I did not... Um, did not get the pack there between games. So that's sub number six down to 100 here. Thanks, Peak. Second month in a row. All right. I cheesy. I'm going to be getting a Rivals of Ixalan pack. Um, for the pack. I want to... I want to open up Storm the Vault. Because I feel like I should make a Storm the Vault deck. I haven't seen anybody play a Storm the Vault deck before. I feel like that card can do some stuff. Alright, Nia Legends is almost ready to go up on YouTube. Let me finish filling out that stuff. Johnny's welcome. That one's good to go. <laughs> yeah, you only have one vault. I actually have zero vaults. That's like one of the that's one of the only cards I've never opened up on Arena. That's one of like the only rares I have zero of. Like that may honestly be the only rare, if if not, like that's certainly under three rares that I have zero of. Certainly less than that. That may be the only one. Uh, let's play Judith. So these tokens are two ones, and I don't really want to attack with a war boss, though. Oh, I think we are life. Yeah, if we play, I'm not. I'm not worried about playing against a life gain deck. Um, we can just do, we can do a whole lot of damage. I, a Johnny's Welcome is not, is not going to stop us. That card's going to kind of stop us a little bit. That one's annoying. We just trade with it. Yeah, and Alenda is whenever any creature dies. So saving Firebrand back for whenever they play Alendra, Alenda, um, we get to shoot Alenda. Oh, 
Oh! Timing. I need to, I need to kill Alinda first. Uh. Oh, and that's any other creature. That that counts my creatures. I thought that was just their creatures. That counts my creatures. Oh, Alinda's good. Hmm. Uh oh, that's a huge problem. So fire. I need to to just double shoot Alinda. So I messed that up. I need to just double shoot Alenda. Now that's that's a pretty bad punt. Like that's going to cost us this game probably. I don't think we can beat Alenda now. Honestly. That thing's just going to keep growing and it's lifelink. Yeah, so I I really messed up this game right there. Card was right there, I could have read it. Well, this is how we can win still. That's good for us. If we can have Priests of the Forgotten Gods make them sack their Alenda, that could be something. So I can't just sacrifice priest on my turn. I can't I can't trigger this on my turn. I have to do it on their turn. Um Because if I do it on my turn, they get to attack with all these goblin tokens or I mean it's all these vampire tokens. So can we beat 14 one ones? I'm not sure if we can. Yeah, resolve the triggers. Why do I have to click OK on every single one of these? Why is that a thing? Just because I have mana floating? I don't even have any instants or anything to do. The alt enter doesn't isn't do anything. Alt enter is the same as clicking this thing. Cool, I used the timeout for that. That's cool. Yeah, we got chain whirlers on the sideboard. Um. All right. Well, it can't be that thing. Yeah, that that one's just gonna make us lose too much life. Can't be that thing. So I certainly messed up with the firebrand in Alenda. That was my bad. All right. This should. This should help out getting all these chain rollers in here. That should help. Hmm. Daredevil seems good. Why? What instant, what instant or sorcery is the opponent going to play? It could just be a 2-1 first strike, I guess. I don't know if that's that good, though. 
Oh, we get their four mana spell that gets the three one one vampires. That costs six mana to be able to daredevil plus that. I like Siege Game Commander a whole lot, but as we saw that last game, getting getting the mana to cast it is certainly a problem. Just gonna be taking out the prospectors. Just such a bad card. Yeah, Call to the Feast. Um, yeah, Call to the Feast would be a good card to, to Daredevil, but that costs six mana. It's gonna be pretty tough. Now we have we have removal for Alenda. I could see this match going longer and drill bit kind of being a dead card. Um, but I want all my stuff to be affecting the battlefield. I think that's important to um, have either like creatures removal, basically a lot of things that affect the battlefield. I don't really care to affect their hand, I don't think. Hey, Zerf. Doing good. Having a good Monday. Wow, it's Sunday today. That's what I meant to say. I was saying Sunday in, in my head, and I just said Monday. But yeah, having a good Sunday. <laughs> uh, no, no remodies in this deck. Oh, we're at 99. Sub select. Besides the Twitch subs here of getting to 100 before, um, or, you know, like 99 now before we do our next 12-hour stream. Also doing a 12-hour stream whenever we get to 1,500 YouTube subscribers. Every 500 you, you subscribers. Every 500 subscribers on YouTube. So if you miss any of the decks, if you want to see the stream replays, they're up on YouTube. They're not muted like how on Twitch they get muted because of the music. I don't have the music up on YouTube. So youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. So if you just go go follow on the YouTube channel, um, I would appreciate that. All right. So let's just cast this light up the stage here. Cooking meal prep while watching you makes it so much more bearable. Thanks, Horatio. Yeah, glad glad you're here watching. Alright, Firebrand. So we're not Siege Gang in this turn because, you know, we want to play the Firebrand before it goes away. I think I'm okay to, to pay the two life to be able to Lightning Strike here if need be. And be able to untap in Siege Gang Commander. I think just like the the speed of being able to do that instead of not shocking and then waiting and then next turn we can only like lightning strike if they have something we want to lightning strike. Um, it's just kind of too much. Attack. They're back up to 19. Yeah, I think, yeah. I can certainly see restarting this after this one. It is, it is a little laggy. I guess I didn't have to use the lightning strike. I could have just thrown a goblin at 
the vampire. All right, Gobos. Go get this game three, Gobos. Go bow, go bows. We play one goblin, then two goblins, then three goblins. It's just goblins are always increasing. I have played an Orzov Angels list before. Um there was a donation deck, and we have a, the Orzov midrange that we have up next is basically just Orzov angels. Also, uh, you know, it's got all the angels resplendent, everything like that. Hey, Horatio, getting that Twitch Prime sub in. Thanks for using your Twitch Prime sub. Here, I really do appreciate that. That is sub number seven on the day. And still, up oh, there it goes, just changed, 98. All right, we'll go see what they get with the four runners, see if they get Alenda again, and see if I, I don't mess up the Alenda this time. Cavalcade of Calamity could be good. Oh, is that is that the red enchantment that like whenever you attack with a one power thing, it deals a damage to the person you're attacking? I think that's what is that that card? Could Mardu Angel splashing green for Shalai be a thing? No, I don't think you'd want four colors with that. I'd say no. And Mardu Angel struggles the most against. Uh, decks that don't have creatures that just play a bunch of spells and Shalai isn't good against those decks so no I don't, I don't think that would be good All right. so basically I don't, I don't think that be re would really be a thing splashing for Shalai Alright, more one ones. So why can't you play Ju oh, I guess yeah, I guess Judith you can't play with Con okay, cause cause then they turns them into two power. So yeah, I guess that's why you can't do both. That makes sense. Yeah, so Judith's probably just better. More one ones. Alright, well, I'm gonna hold up Lightning Strike. Here for the Legion Lieutenant. They're gonna do what they did like the previous a previous game where they you know played the lieutenant, um, made them all two twos and swung. At least that's what I would kind of assume.
So I, do I block these? I guess I do. Attack. Where's our Judiths? Judith doesn't do a whole lot for us, I guess, right now. I mean, obviously it makes all the things two power, but it doesn't... We don't get the triggers whenever the creatures die, I guess that's what I'm saying. All those tokens dying. Do they have a pump spell? They do. Do I have Firebrand? No, I don't think I'd trade Firebrand here. Let's trade one of these things. Yeah, maybe our opponent thought that their their token would stay alive. Maybe. Why didn't they use that on the zealot? Draw a card and gain two. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know. They. I think they thought that their lifelink thing. Like they still gained two because they they added two lifelink. But maybe they thought it was it would stick around. Yeah, the popper f format is live right now. Yeah. I think today is the last day for it, I believe. We played per popper petitioners earlier. Persistent petitioners in popper. And went 5-0 with that. All right, two matches. Two and one. Gates ablaze. All right, and crack open this pack for getting to our sub goal earlier. Got a pack to crack. Come on, a mythic. It's always rares. All right, that's got not good enough. Let's get a rivals pack also. Captain Sook. All right, not Storm the Vault. No, it was a 60 card deck. All right, two and one. I'm gonna restart the client between between leagues after Rakdos Goblins. That's when I'll restart. All right, this can do. Doesn't look very likely for us to cast the Siege Gang Commander. I like drawing that uh, priest here, though. No, Popper is best of one. No problem. All right, Priest is going to is going to do a whole lot for us. As long as they don't kill it. That's a good sign. So we trade. Right, so. 
We trade our our spell for for their land of our elf, likely. And then, you know, we just add the two mana back. Um and then get Judith on the field. So, you know, usually cost three mana for Judith, so we just basically turn the, the instigator into zero mana uh, cycling, because it just replaced itself. So it's just a zero mana cycler that made the opponent sacrifice a creature. So we just did that last turn. I've lost balance comes. So that's pretty good. So Vivian's at six. So three, four, five, six. All right. So we're going to um, sack the two creatures so they both get Judith triggers. Uh, first Judith trigger, kill this Llanowar elf. Second one, ping Vivian for one. Okay. So you've got. So then they have to sack the the Jade Light, and then we add. That and red strike. Oh, the so it's Vivian. going to be like that, huh? Attack and kill Vivian. Oh, not Dude. dead. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is nice. That card's good. Them lose two. We'll sack these summoning sick things. And we'll just ping them. Of course, you know, we don't need to ping the, the branch walker. They have to sack a creature anyway. I guess finality is a card I should probably worry about. I was just planning on playing Siege Gang here. So we're attacking them down to, uh, we're hitting them for four, putting them down to five. Um, yeah, I'll just play Siege Gang. I think we're okay even with the finality of next turn having Priest plus Goblin Gathering. They're gonna be down to two now. Like, finality puts them down to two. And, like, they have to have finality. All right. What do we want to do here? <laughs> Glad you all liked the game. That game. That was, a, that was a good game there. Um... Did a whole lot more last time against Soltai. I, I, this one seems to be more creature heavy. Let's get a couple coils in. Over a Siege Gang and a Prospector. I think that's all I want to do. I don't think I want to change the deck up a whole lot. So yeah, so that's that's why I added the priest in before. As you can see, priest can just do so much. We just gotta hope they don't have removal for it, of course. No, Judith would not have been lethal, because Judith 
uh, and you see that second line, it's only non-token creatures that deal damage. So we would have dealt three damage to our opponent with a finality. Uh, we put, would have put them down to two. Certainly not an ideal hand. Um, don't want to mulligan the three lander though. Wait, the Bola deck? Oh, yeah, the Bolas, yeah. Yeah, that's that's for uh, for later, the four-color discard we have later. Hmm. We'd certainly get wrecked by Wildgrowth Walker plus Jade Light Ranger here. Branch Walker's okay ish. Okay ish. Jade Light will destroy us. Hmm. Yeah, I was saving. Yeah, we could just attack with the firebrands. If they they block, it kills wild growth walker. Um, firebrands can also kill the wild growth walkers though, in response to explore triggers, with like the two of them. Like two can take out one wild growth walker, and and a jade light. I don't think that the attack is good, but then again, it's like I don't know if we win a, a long game anyway. Like the two firebrands can take out a jade light plus a wild growth. They can take out both. If you attack with one, you should attack with both. So yeah, I should have attacked like probably the previous turn. Because one firebrand doesn't kill a wild growth by itself. You need both of them.
All right, this should be able to take out both of them. One more chance. Unless our opponent's just like chilling with a moment of craving. Like, you know, cast down doesn't. Cast down, we're, we're fine. Hope they don't have a moment of craving. What do you think about Rakdos midrange and Mardu? They rely on a beatdown strategy and with Nexus decks right now, they don't really have all of the tools without blue to deal with them consistently, do you think they'll become stronger after Nexus of Fate is banned? I... I don't believe the Nexus of Fate will be banned in um, miles of way away from thinking of what would be better if Nexus of Fate is banned. That's just not... I don't think that's usually useful to... Um, to try to think about until such a thing happens because, uh, yeah, basically that. But um, I, I do like Rakdos midrange just kind of overall right now. I think it's it's perfectly fine even with Nexus. I think it's okay against Nexus because you, you can have a good amount of discard in your deck. So they did have that cast down. Well, I guess we already saw that cast down. They had a lot of cast downs. Us getting rid of both the Wild Growth Walkers with that one play with them double blocking really helped us out. I just kind of had an awesome hand, though. Yes. Yeah, if you, if you play an extra Judith, they will trigger twice, yes. I guess I shouldn't even be playing the Judith here. Yeah, I shouldn't even be playing Judith. Um, because they're hostage taker. I should just play the instigator a pass. Thanks, VT. Yeah, Chris, doing good. Yeah. We can't we can't overcome what our opponent has here. Matthew, I loved my plays that game. I thought my plays were really good that game. Besides just playing the Judith. But no, just people people talking to me doesn't mess up my plays too much. I mean wouldn't be a good streamer if I just considered people talking in the chat of messing up my plays. I wouldn't I wouldn't be a very good streamer. The playing the Judith was bad. The the dub having two firebrands kill two wild growth walkers was awesome. That was that was awesome. But yeah, playing didn't need to play the Judith though. No, I don't want drill bit. I think Daredevil is the card that I would want the most here. Daredevil is the one that I'm thinking about the most. Um, yeah, Daredevil is the card I want. Because, yeah, not only find, but then also...
not only find, but also, um... Like, cast down if they have a too big of a wild growth walker. We just can't have more threes. You know, like, I have I have a Rakdos midrange, or a Rakdos, like, uh, deck that's similar to this, a Rakdos Menagerie deck that has Midnight Reapers, which is awesome with Midnight Reaper, Judith, and and Legion War Boss. But the problem is, is you just can't, like, we can't, can't really play more threes. And since we're playing Goblin Gathering, we don't get to play Midnight Reaper, even though Goblin Gathering is going to be a better, would be a better fit for us. I I should have just played the firebrand right away. I don't know why I didn't chuck there. That that was a time that was a time of me talking about Midnight Reaper and Goblin Gathering and just forgetting to shock in for Firebrand as I was talking there. No, it's okay, Matthew. Um but I thought that was that's what the point of the deck was, was to play Goblin Gathering. Because at that point, if we if you don't play Goblin Gathering, then um, then I mean, just the Rakdos Menagerie deck is just this deck, but a lot better. If you just take out Gathering and put Reaper in. Um, it's unfortunate the priest is just adding two black, so I can't I can't like do this and and firebrand. I'm still doing it though. Still cycling our goblin gathering. I really want to draw land next turn. I really want to be able to war boss and firebrand. I want to kill this land war elf. We still get to double spell, but with another priest. It doesn't seem like our opponent has Cry of the Carnarium for how they're just throwing out all these branch walkers. So it doesn't seem like Cry of the Carnarium's in the hand. Uh, the good news, of course, for them is the branch walkers continually drawing them lands. It's you know, makes their makes them have seven cards against our three. That's a good draw.
we get to untap with this war boss and have a second war boss in play also like if we if we get like a reasonable amount of turns with two war boss and a priest that'll be very good for us gain some upgrades for my budget queue but i'm struggling with finding some fun white cards uh do you have any like converted mana cost or that you're kind of looking for or type or anything like that like, is there any slot on your in your cube that you're looking for We're getting pretty low on life total. Let's put them down to nine. No, I don't do any MTG coaching. Um, I just, you know, spend spend my workday streaming, and I, I don't do any other coaching besides that. We'll see what our opponent can do here. If they just play like a big crisis, I think we can kill them. All right, that one's that one's not as good for us. Why didn't it stop? I just had, I had mana open. I didn't need a lightning strike anyway. It's honestly probably better to hold the lightning strike, maybe. Yeah, it, it's just better to hold the lightning strike anyway, so it's okay. We're not like in any danger of dying right away and having the lightning strike in our hands probably better. The only way it'd be worse is if they have a discard spell for it. Like, specifically duress. Get these seven points in. We only need seven left. Only need six left. Just six points. Six little lives.
Yeah, I forgot we had light at the stage in, in our deck. We haven't seen that card in so long. I forgot we have four of those. Hmm. So if I shoot Hostage Taker, they don't get to take my Goblin. Is that worth it, though? Is that even worth it? When they're at six. You know, if I let if I let them take it, and then shoot, say like, if I, if I try to let them take it and then shoot hostage taker to have it re-enter, the the problem is is they gain priority first. So if I let them take it, then they just get to spend their two mana and cast instigator immediately, because they have priority. So if they didn't have the mana to cast it immediately, then I could do that. But they. They had the mana to cast it immediately. I don't want to... I... Ooh. Alright. So, we play Prospector. We sack, sack, sack for three mana. Four, five, play Siege Gang. No, if they have instant speed removal, it's not going to work to our favor. I basically want to do the best I can against a sweeper. Like, like, assuming they're going to untap and play cry or finality. Like, what's like, what's the best way to kill them next turn? Um. I'm certainly not playing both Prospector and War Boss. That's just really, really bad against the Sweeper. I'm certainly not going to do that. If I play War Boss and hold the Prospector and we don't draw a land, then I can't Prospector plus Siege King, because then I'd, I'd have to like spend one mana on Prospector, and then I don't have five mana for Siege King. Um, I, think, I think this is my best case scenario here, is just is this scenario, is playing the Prospector out. Um, they just pass turn. That was a close one. Very close one. Three wins, three and one. We're kind of doing it. We're kind of doing it. All right, now let's just let's just reset this. This is just really laggy. Oh, I guess I can't. I tried hitting cancel to reset. Like our like our opener with the priest on turn two on the play. Certainly what I want. Alright, 2.30 in the morning there. Have a good night, Lander. 
Thanks for staying up, watching the stream. Uh, Gates has got to be a tough matchup for us. With, they just are deck filled with sweepers. It's kind of... It's kind of the match is... Do they find... Do they find Gates Ablaze early? It's kind of our match here. Ooh, that is good for us. That is good for us. Um... Fortunately, I don't get to use the, the mana in combat. They don't have any red mana, that's good for us. Are they dead next turn? Looks like they're dead next turn. Alright, got game one. Yeah, I missed I missed two damage if I wanted to sack the I could have sacked the the could have played the prospector and sacked the prospector and been able to swing for two with the the token because of the mentor trigger but i wanted the prospector on the battlefield because of siege king so i you know obviously didn't know we were going to draw judith but yeah this could be nexus of gates nexus of gates has been a more popular gates list but do the nexus of gates decks play the that ram Hey, QQ. Good evening. <laughs> yep, uh, please work. Um, if you donate a 60, a 60 land deck, would I play it? I mean, just what's what's the, <laughs> the point of playing it? <laughs> There's just not really any point. It doesn't seem like there's any point. All right, so drill bit duress, um, coming on in. Siege Gang's not going to be as strong here, but they're just a deck full of sweepers. And honestly, priest, we don't expect them to have that many creatures, but I guess with we can take a, a prospector out, taking out uh, the siege gangs. Yeah, it's most often in the sideboard for RAM. Yeah, no, I expect RAM from the sideboard, but not not as much game one. No theater. I feel like theater's pretty slow. I don't I don't think we we win it with theater. Honestly. Hmm. I can sack all of these and just play War Boss this turn. That can't be worth it, right? No, that's not worth it. Because if they're playing like Arch Archway Angel, like they'll have like they have the ability to gain like just so much life late game that I don't think that theater is gonna really help us win, honestly. I can save the war boss for after a sweeper. Because, you know, expecting a sweeper here. Yeah, they had white mana last game. No, they did not have red last game. 
they just had they were just bant last game but we you know assumed that they would have red but it was, they only played bant colors um yeah i think i'm going to cast the lightning strike that's a great turn for them coil plaza and gates of blaze no, I can just wait on the strike. Hey, Pedro. Honestly, I should be playing Priest plus Prospector here over Judith. Yeah, I probably should just be playing Priest and Prospector. So we do one less damage there. Nikki B. Welcome back, Nikki B. You think they are dead? I mean, I guess it's like Archway Angel. If they have Archway Angel, they gain millions of life. Thanks, Nikki B, with that sub. Sub number eight on the day. Second month in a row there. Oh, it looks like we're, we're back down to 102. So close. Please don't have Angel. That's not an Angel. The hell is that thing? All right, four and one. Four and one. No angel from opponent meant no win. So Prospector means, says you can only sacrifice uh, goblins. So that's why we didn't double strike them before. We couldn't sack all four of our things. We could only sack goblins. So we couldn't sacrifice the two black creatures that we had on the battlefield. Ugh. Um, all right, final boss time. Let's do a, a real quick reset here. Should only just take, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. So what is something that I would like to see from the next set? I don't know. I think I really like the design of the last couple of sets. They just keep on, you know, they just keep on doing what they're doing. There's, I can't think of anything like in particular that I really want. Um, no, I think red deck wins is probably a better deck than this. I think we're we're doing pretty well. Um, where's our where's our final boss music? Here we go. 
Yeah, I mean, getting Nexus of Fate out of standard would be nice. Oh, I do want more legends. There we go. I want more good legends. Legendary creatures and planeswalkers. Um, for my legends decks. That is certainly something I would like. Island, island, huh? All right. Teferi is one planeswalker, yeah. But especially like two and three mana legends. In particular. So the instigator can just block the trickster and kill the trickster. I'll have to use like a dive down to save it. But of course I I do not want my opponent drawing more cards. So yeah. So the dive down just traded with the instigator, so we just traded one for one card wise there. Hmm. Now time to go aggro. Now we can have double war boss and kill them before they can kill us. Essence Captor would be bad for me though. Or, you know, Essence Scatter, you know, like those kind of cards. Yeah. It's kind of bad. Thing is, the opponent's just basically dead. Yeah, we are playing red versus blue. For our final boss match. They're gonna play a they're gonna have to play a whole lot of creatures here to be able to block with. Two is not enough. That is not enough creatures. Uh, they had Trickster in hand. They meant to tap that 3-2 uh, that down. Alright, let's get some whirls. Hmm. And coils and duress. Unfortunately, this is just not a good ga goblin gathering matchup because of spell pierce. Really, don't really want three mana spell. You know, live the stage, of course, can be cheaper. Crater Maker is actually good. Let's get Crater Makers in here too. I 
and go with this. That's looking pretty good. I'm a little worried about like dealing damage to them for the drill bit. I would take out Prospector for drill bit if we made that change. I don't think I want Daredevil, even like Daredevil Opt is nice. Because Prospector is really just kind of one mana, one one. Not that strong of a card. Alright, we'll try taking those out for drill bits. We can do like the dive down, but just not instant speed. You know, like we can go get dive down, and then they block our creature, then we dive down our creature they blocked. Is there any good aggro variation of Sultai mid-range? Um, it's not exactly Sultai. Doesn't have the blue, but this is a this is a good Golgari deck. Um, that's a little more aggressive. Gol the Golgari graveyard deck. Um, the problem with playing Lightning Strike here is that like my next turn really sucks because I can only play one one spell a turn because these all require black mana. If I play Priest this turn, the next time next turn I can Duress plus Strike. But that's not even set up well for us. So I think that's... I think that's my best play. Just to hope they didn't have everything, but they did. Yes, I, I am from the Dallas area. Right now I live in Roanoke, Virginia, but I'll be moving back to... Dallas at some point. So I hope they don't have another dive down. I should just play Judith here. That was bad. Going to combat first. I should play Judith first. Withdrawing the land. You know, I was, I was just planning on playing Priest. I didn't reassess after drawing the land. Oh well. I'm not going to just like make my mistake worse by not playing Judith. So yeah, doing this on their upkeep so they have to spend mana on their turn. Alright, Mr. Previously. Take care.
we finally got rid of that thing, but they still have five cards in hand. So with, with, um, hmm, with playing the firebrand first, I was going to be attacking with Judith because if they had a trickster, you know, I could firebrand it. I can either kill the trickster in response or kill my Judith in response. Either way, I have zero creatures, and they have one creature. And if I'm going to have zero creatures, and they're going to have one creature, I'd rather their one creature be a Trickster than a Judith. So I'm going to kill my Judith in response. We have to assume that all of our opponent's cards in hand are spells because they miss so, so many land drops. So certainly I would not be surprised you know, they have a lot of spells in hand. do it. Alright, let's try again. Um, our opponent had the turn one, turn one, one drop, turn two, Curious Obsession plus dive down and then countering stuff from there and so gotta hope they don't have that really great opener but even if they do at least we'll be on the play so we can maybe double spell a little earlier. I feel pretty good about where we're at though. Did you see the new is it list running 18 lands? No, I don't I don't know what that list is, Ale. Is that is that for best of one? No, I think our opponent didn't want to trade Trickster and Judith at that point. I think that they would with me being at 8. I I only see them just... Just not even, like, I could see them waiting with Trickster with that, like, like just getting rid of a blocker, even. bad for us. I could have just, you know, lightning striked the Terramander immediately, but with having Chain Whirler, I didn't feel like that was something I needed to do. I don't think Thud is a very good card. Oh, that the 18 land deck run played Thud. Gotcha.
I mean, I assume they have protection from here. This is why Mono Blue is a final boss here. Their hand was really awesome. Wow. Yeah, the hand's awesome. I'm getting rid of the blood crypt by not by not uh, playing it here, but I just don't I don't want to shock. Um, so the blood the blood crypt goes away. Yeah, not much to do about that hand from Mono Blue there. All right, so four and two is still a good showing for Rakdos. Goblins for us there. No, no extra life. Only one rare? Dang. But still, up to our gold. Got some gems also. Not bad, Hawkeye. Yeah, so that was Rakdos Goblins. Um, you know, the, the Prospector was probably our worst card. Um, but the Goblin, Goblin Gatherings did some, some good stuff for us. And, you know, we, we did pretty well. Did pretty well. Um, if you want a similar deck to this, but one that I, I like more, um, you know, check out Rakdos Menagerie, which, which we played, um, you know, which you can find on the YouTube channel. Um, and there we go. Um, if you'd like to, to see this, look for Rakdos Menagerie for the decks. This is a, a very similar deck that I think is is just kind of better. I think Gutter Bones is, is an awesome one drop that keeps coming back. And then Gruesome Menagerie can get these back and Midnight Reaper gets you the card advantage. So this is a, a similar type deck that I think is going to be better um, if, if you want to be playing the Judith Priest combo. Because that is just a, a really good combo. And just Priest of the Forgotten Gods on, on its own is is a really awesome card. Um, so there we go. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for the donation deck there, Matthew. So if you're watching this over on YouTube later on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And um, yeah, that's it for Rakdos Goblins. So thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next deck.